Hello, friends, and welcome to another video. This is part two of our Staying in Every Hotel on the Vegas Strip video, where we stay in every casino mega resort on the Las Vegas Strip and review the room, vibes, and activities at each one. <laughs> I think I got the shot. That was close. In part one, we stayed in every hotel on the west side of Las Vegas Boulevard, from the Four Seasons all the way to the Strat. <laughs> and in this episode, we're taking on the east side, from the Sahara on the north end to the Tropicana all the way down here. It's gonna be a hell of a ride to the finish line, so gird your loins, people. Also, if you missed part one, make sure to check it out on the channel now. Awesome! But if for some reason you are only interested in the east side, east side, beast side, as they say, welcome. A reminder on a couple of disclaimers, we are working off of this list of hotels, so we have 14 to cover in this video, and we're gonna be hitting two to three hotels a day and only spending the night in the last one, while other members of our team stay in the others. Also remember, we got taken for a ride by Johnny Rockets. We got three grilled chicken sandwiches for $70. <laughs> That's Vegas pricing. That's so crazy, right? So we are mad at them. All right. Right. With that, let's go. This is a momentous moment, guys. We are crossing over to the other side of the strip. My hair was completely in my face when I said that. And day one of our second week on the strip, we're calling the Encore Day. Because it's part two, baby. This is the Encore video, and the hotels for this day are the Sahara, Wynn, and Encore, with an unfortunately long trek in between. Let's do it. It feels different over here. The grass is greener. The pavement is grayer on this side of the strip. We started the day off with the Sahara. The shade to the Strat. The strip starts here. That is shady, what the heck? On this side of the strip, there are a lot of older properties. Oh, wow. <laughs> Feels good. So the Sahara can't claim the title of the oldest, but it is a longtime Vegas classic. It opened in 1952 as a Moroccan-themed hotel and was popular with the legendary Rat Pack in the 50s, as you can see by these classic photos all over the place. It has clearly been redone a few times since then. Oh, it's nice. It reopened as an SLS hotel in 2014, and for any fans of The Hills, there was a storyline where Heidi almost moved to Vegas to work at this hotel. And then she but it was in it was in the show. And then it was rebranded as the Sahara again in 2019. So it doesn't look old. It's like very remodeled and new. But I think like it as a thing is old. Now, my assessment of the Sahara as it currently stands is that it is bright, nicely remodeled, new feeling and clean, but a little on the small side. It looks really good up here, actually. Yeah, it's pretty nice. Yeah. Nice hallway vibes. And there's just the vaguest hint of desert theming. The artwork and the color scheme, for sure. I love good. And that's pretty much how I feel about the room as well. Damn. Come on. It was nicely put together with a slightly deserty color scheme and plush furniture, but it was just a little cramped. It's just kind of crowded in here. The room's not big. Boom. The bathroom was pretty tiny, the bed felt like it took up most of the room, and the throw pillows felt like they took up most of the bed. The bed is nice. Yeah, it's very nice. The linens are nice. This pillow's about to fall <laughs> me. You could probably build a killer pillow fort here. And there were a strange amount of mirrors spread throughout. These mirrors are kind of random to me. There is a nice full length mirror here outside in the bedroom, but a bit of a walk. But all of those things said, for the price, I was pretty happy with it. I wanna get one shot that way. I wanna get one shot this way. Okay. <laughs> now, downstairs, there wasn't a ton to do. Besides the pretty modestly sized casino floor, there's a very bougie Starbucks, a few restaurants, and notably the Magic Mike striptease show. They say meeting rooms, ballrooms, and ma the Magic Mike show. They also have Jose Andres's Bizarre Meats here, which is one of those experimental restaurants where they serve you a cocktail, but it's like a puff of smoke, or like an olive, but it's just a sack of water. It was closed the day we were actually staying at the Sahara, but we did return a few days later for our upcoming Celebrity Chef restaurant video. I love you. Can you? Yes, you can. We won't spoil our review, but it was crazy and crazy expensive. This is literally meat by the foot. This is how you do it. Back to our actual Sahara day, we decided to grab brunch at Zephyr's Cafe. Tyler's filming his mug because he thinks it's cute. I do. Which I wanted to like because it had a late brunch, but the food wasn't the best, so I would not recommend. <laughs> That was concealed behind the flower. That was such a surprise. 
<laughs> now, the big hurdle of the day was that we had to walk from the Sahara all the way down to the Win and Encore. It's gonna be over a 30 minute walk. Let's boogie. We did this at the end of part one, but this walk was actually the longest one of our entire trip. Hi, uh, it's happening. Goodbye, Sahara. Out of the Sahara and into the desert. As the wind is closer to Treasure Island than it is to Circus Circus. Once again, no one asked us to do this, but we were determined to traverse the strip on foot. Unfortunately, <laughs> that's us. Because of some construction on this side, we actually had to cross back over to the west side for a bit of it. Back to the Adventure Dome! Circus Circus! Take us back. And because of the July heat and sun, this walk was just as punishing as it had been the day before. That's the encore. So we're going there. But we did find ourselves a little oasis in the desert in the form of this Ross dress for less. It's amazing in here. I think I love it here. We might have to take a shot of that. It says Ross Vegas. Viva Ross Vegas, people. I mean, it's kind of amazing, right? I love it. <laughs> I love it. And the AC inside Ross Vegas gave us that final burst of energy we needed to get to the win. Go, go, beat the heat, beat the heat. A second wind, if you will. Wow. You're as red as the carpet. Probably, honestly, probably. Now, the Win and Encore are, essentially, two separate towers of the same hotel. They are sister hotels that share an expansive common area at the base. And though there is some delineation between whether you are in the Win side or the Encore side, this right here seems to be kind of like the line, the border. They're basically the same hotel. Yeah. <laughs> it's the same thing. Tyler and I have stayed here before, but I can't remember which one we were in. And though I don't think they have a distinct theme, the inside is very luxe and fantastical, floral and red with a lot of atriums, gardens. Kind of like a garden full of giant balls and one hot air balloon. A very large pool complex and huge decor items like these slowly rotating giant umbrellas. Yeah, look how pretty this is over here. In general, it's a more expensive hotel. I'm a little nervous to pose there because that's like the high limit tables, but there's some cool peacocks. And it's definitely trying to cater to a deep pocketed clientele with a lot of fancy restaurants, famous nightclubs, and pretty well known spas. We didn't really want to try and film like in the spa because that would be hard to film. You're not supposed to film in there other naked people, what's going on, etc. So instead, we decided to get an IV drip at this Nutri-Drip place, also on the spa level. Yeah, B12. I did. I got B12. Okay. Basically, it's an IV drip full of vitamins and fluids that you essentially take recreationally. I think I saw Kendall Jenner do this. Oh, great. <laughs> I've never done it before, and it's pretty expensive, but I think it's perfectly situated for Vegas, because I'm pretty sure the ideal use case is for helping cure symptoms of being hungover, which we were not, but we figured we could use a little replenishing. Oh, you drained yours up. We had thirsty veins. Thirsty veins for a thirsty man. Wait, what? We did maybe feel a little more energized afterwards, but it mostly just made us feel cold. Yeah, it definitely cools you down. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't think I would recommend this. But when in Vegas, I suppose. All right. Let's roll. There is also an extremely bougie assortment of shops in the Win slash Encore that we usually like to just walk through and look at. It's all very nice, but it's very expensive. <laughs> Though we did grab a quick bite at the Earth Cafe back here. Earth Cafe is an LA staple, but it fits in really well with the vibe at the Win. At first I thought Tyler's latte art was worse, but is it a heart and a coffee cup? I think it is. Okay, yours is better than mine. Mine is just a flower. My favorite thing to get is their Moroccan mint tea latte, which I would recommend. I Pesto chicken sandwich. It's a good day. Good morning. It's 5 p.m. Beyond that, in terms of activities, we did stop by their lakeside restaurant for dinner for a good view of their Lake of Dreams interactive show. Unfortunately, this was kind of a miss for us. The restaurant was very expensive, and though we didn't explore the menu that much, we got the exact same thing because we're boring. We didn't love what we got. It kind of tastes like good tasting toothpaste. Yeah. And the show itself, though kind of cute, is pretty short and is basically just a huge animatronic toucan singing Lady Marmalade. So I wouldn't recommend this spot. There are a lot of other restaurants in the Wynn and Encore where the food is a lot better. That's a fair bit on the two hotels, amenities and attractions. So now on to the rooms. Oh, come on. <laughs> First up is the Wynn. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. And the Wynn room was absurdly nice. This room is super nice. Are you kidding me? 
<laughs> Holy crap. It was very ornate, and there were a lot of large furniture pieces in there, like cabinets, chest of drawers, and a huge four-poster bed. I am super excited about this. This bed looks very plush. This is a pretty nice bed. Yeah, the linens are good. The linens are good. And kind of a theme for the day. Oh, oh my God, this is actually really big. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. The pillows were also giant. You look legitimately eclipsed by this pillow. Yes. <laughs> you ready? So love the room, love the bathroom. Wow. Wow. Particularly love the sealed toilet paper. Very fancy. However, if we roasted the Bellagio last week for having a rotten box of food in the mini fridge, we can't ignore the fact that we did find a random sandwich that was not ours in the mini fridge here. There is a sandwich in here. Where did that come from? It did not seem super old, like it didn't smell that bad, but it was there. Random sandwich. Just gonna put that out there, random sandwich, okay? Now onto the encore. Oh, come on. Which is where we were gonna be sleeping. Ooh. Whoa. Dude, it's huge! Yeah, look at this nighttime view too, it's really nice. The encore room was a little less ornate, and where the wind was warm toned, it was more silvery and cool, mirrored and square. Yeah. It's rectangular. Yeah, yeah, yes, lots of rectangles, yes. But it was genuinely huge, and had an amazing view of our favorite. Oh, it's Ross! It's Ross! It's Ross Vegas? Ross Vegas. And though the pillows were a little smaller than the ones at the Wynn, they also had a random sandwich over there. No sandwich. They did also have sealed toilet paper over here, so I was pleased. I'm happy to sleep here tonight. Very happy. Yeah. Tyler will be having two small pillows, and I will be having two large pillows. Ha <laughs> ha! What an awful deal. <laughs> the things you do for love. So sandwich notwithstanding, the Wynn slash Encore. Expensive, but pretty nice. Now, day two here was a long and eventful one, spanning four hotels that have very different vibes and attractions. But there was one thing that we were the most excited about, which we were actually specifically dressed for, which was Guy Fieri's restaurant at The Link. So, keep your eyes peeled for that. That's um, why we're dressed like this. We're dressed like Guy. So we're calling day two, the road to Flavortown. Don't you take me to Flavortown. Get out of here. I'm going to Flavortown. And no one can stop me. <laughs> also, I do want to quickly apologize to Guy Fieri for saying his name 85 different ways in this video. As someone who also has a difficult to pronounce name, I'm sorry for letting the team down. We started off our day on a slightly different, though still Italian note, with the Venetian and the Palazzo. I'm not sure if the Venetian is ready for two guys on the rampage. Which are right next to the Wynn and the Encore, and are another pair of sister hotels that are also kind of one giant continuous hotel. And we have actually stayed in both of them. As the name implies, they have a general Renaissance Italy theme. Wow! Look at the ceiling! Now that's what I call on theme. Venice specifically, of course, with frescoes, canals, statues, fountains, marble columns, and general Grand Ducal Palace vibes. The entire hotel is pretty heavy on the theming. There's the on theme Sephora. But the lobbies for both the Venetian and the Palazzo are pretty next level. They are, to be frank, ornate as fuck. We just got compliments on the shirts. As we should. <laughs> Let's hit the rooms up front here, so then we can move on to some of their other attractions, with the Palazzo room up first. Oh, come on in. Oh, it's a biggie. All of the rooms in both the Palazzo and the Venetian are suites. A little stairway down to a different level. That's pretty luxe. So they're all a pretty good size. This is the exact kind of room that you could stuff a bunch of newly graduated college kids in. As I've done before. And in general, they are good rooms. Ooh, oh, that's not too bad. It's pretty nice. That's not bad. With pretty high-end features, my only complaint is that I could use a little more theming up here, especially since the downstairs is so good. Listen, just like they have race car beds, this could easily be a gondola bed. If they styled this side like a gondola, things could be good. The Venetian room was also big. Oh, come on in. It was maybe a little more themed. Look at this like balcony I have. Well, almost like a a little bit like Romeo and Juliet balcony scene. Yes, it's giving Verona. Obviously that's not Venetian, but it's close-ish. And there were some marble and gilded vibes, but I feel like they both could do a little more. I just wish that the bed was gondola shaped. But the rooms were certainly sizable and serviceable. Doesn't feel the most modern or the most themed, but it's very good. Now, back out to the Venetian and Palazzo common areas. There's a lot to do in here. Huge casino floors, lots of restaurants and bars, multiple levels of fountains and shops. Tyler got roped into taking someone's picture. Oh, she doesn't like it. 
She's gonna make him take another one. While we were there, there was a conference in town. They must be on lunch or something yes. right now because there's more people down here than I've ever seen in my life. And it seemed like a lot of the attendees were staying at the Venetian. I'm doing a pretty good job navigating right you now. You are, but you're about to walk into a pillar. Yeah, here we go. Dodge the pillar. For our activities, we headed over to the Grand Canal Shops, which is a mall inside of the hotel, which is also heavily themed. I think to look like St. Mark's Square in Venice. I love the little buildings. I love the, like, forced perspective. I love the big sky. Yeah. They also have performers in Renaissance garb. Performers! And to put it over the top, they also have gondolas you can ride up and down the canal that runs through the whole thing. And gondoliers who will serenade you as they scull the water. Something I didn't really anticipate was the singing. I don't know if we'll be able to put it in, but they're, everyone's singing. They have some Italian songs they know, but it's mostly Frank Sinatra, sometimes in Italian. <laughs> Besides that, I generally enjoyed the gondola ride, but it's a bit short and they don't go anywhere you couldn't also just walk to, but it was cute. We also decided to check out the ice bar in the canal shops. All right, we're going in there. Fire meets ice, fieri and ice. Let's do it. This is not a Venetian exclusive, as they have these things in a few different Vegas casinos and also in plenty of places outside of Vegas. Cute model shot. But I have always been curious. Oh my god. It's actually cold. It's like a fridge. <laughs> it's basically a bar inside of a giant freezer. It's freezing in here. I'm like severely wearing shorts right now. So am I, dude. Where everything inside is made of ice. The bar itself, the walls, the tables, the drink glasses. It's so cold. <laughs> Which is why you can't set your drink directly on the tables, as they will just fuse together. All that said, I liked it in there. It was pretty invigorating, kind of like a little bit of cryotherapy to re-energize us. Hashtag penguin party, baby. Oh my god, love penguin IRL. We only stayed for a little bit, and we did not take a shot through the ice boobs. A nipple ice luge, wow. But we did sit on the scorpion throne. Please let me know if anyone understands that reference. Okay, I'm officially freezing, let's go. After the ice bar, we took a little time to defrost our camera. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, whoa, the, phone, the camera just got fogged up. Yes, it actually kind of froze. I had to take it into the bathroom with me and warm it up. What does that mean? <laughs> and then we headed back out into the heat to resume our trek to our next hotel, Hera's, a little further down the strip. I will say, this uh, shirt breathes pretty well. It's pretty cool. Now, Harris is the start of a few casinos in a row here in this kind of central part of the strip that are situated right on the sidewalk. They get a lot of foot traffic through them since you can either walk outside in the heat or cut through the front part of their casino floor and enjoy some cover and AC. I have more Ramsey. Gordon's moving in. So I've walked through Harris plenty of times before, but never really explored it too much. I can't get the vibe yet, you know what I mean? And after taking a longer look, overall, it seems kind of neutral. Not too shabby or dilapidated, but not new feeling either. There are some things to do, but not a lot. And there isn't much of a theme to be sniffed out here. The theme at this point I would best describe it as purple. I think. Yeah. It's kind of like purple. It's kind of purple. Yeah. And that's the only through line we could really figure out. Even the font they use is just so neutral. The nondescript theming carried through to the room as well. Oh, come on. As inside, it was pretty beige and gray. Well, well, there's some purple. I was purple. About say, I was about to say we lost the purple, but there is some purple. In terms of base necessities, it actually seemed pretty okay. Oh, the bathroom's not bad at all. Right? The bathroom was nice and clean, and the bed was fine. And there was also this oddly large lamp. Wow. I like that lamp. Which was at least somewhat interesting. This lamp is taller than me and also taller than the window. I looked it up and apparently Harris is supposed to be Mardi Gras and Carnival themed, but I feel like they could at least be a little bit more lively about it. Come on out. Get out. Get out of here. In terms of our activities at Hera's, they have a couple of spots in here that we needed to hit for our Celebrity Chef restaurant video. We won't spoil our review of them too much, but I will give you a general overview. It smells amazing. First off, we went to Bobby Flay's Bobby's Burgers. There he is, man with plan. Which is kind of like a slightly more gourmet Five Guys. So it's basically a burger just with 
a bunch of chips on it. The burgers were pretty good, but a little heavy. Oh my God, that did sound crunchy. I'm not gonna lie. The crunch heard round the Harrah's. So we were already a bit weighed down when we got to our second celeb chef joint, Buddy Velastro's Pizza Cake. Time for more carbs and more sugar, and it's carbs or sugar, so more sugar and also sugar. Cake me, boss. Now, I'll let you guys in on a little secret. Buddy Velastro, aka the Cake Boss, is taking over Vegas. He has a restaurant in the Venetian, which I passed on because I wanted to make sure we got cake, and pizza cake seemed more cake oriented. Do the names pizza cake it's supposed to be like piece of cake? Oh, that's pretty good. But joke's on me, because he has not only a couple more restaurants, but also these cake vending machines all over the place. So I could have gotten a Cake Boss cake in many different places. I've never had cake like this before. But vacuum sealed? In terms of pizza cake, weirdly, our favorite thing was the cannoli. How's it going over there, cannoli boy? As it was, the tits. Bigger bite than I was expecting. Welcome, though. And after our decadent lunch of burgers, fries, and cake from Bobby and Buddy, I need to walk it off. Let's walk it off and coffee up. We needed to quickly regroup, since we still had a little bit more to go, namely to the link next door. Our first shot at Flavor Town. Now, the link is an interesting one. It opened in 1959 as the Flamingo Capri, and since then has been rebranded, renamed, and renovated multiple times until it reopened as the link in 2014. To me, it kind of feels like almost like the Virgin Atlantic of hotels, but they're like trying a lot of stuff. I kind of see what you're saying. And nowadays, it has a vague futuristic city-ish theme with a lot of silver, gray, and LED screens throughout. Their uh, text is also neon red which is also reading Virgin Atlantic to me, so I'm on board. And inside, it's pretty bustling, since the casino floor kind of serves as a throughway for people to get to the Link Promenade next door. They have a couple more Buddy V restaurants in here. Another Buddy Blaster restaurant. As well as this water massage pod. It's like a human car wash which I am terrified of and will never do. The room Come on in. is also a little futuristic and minimalist feeling, but certainly not a bad room. Really not so bad. Whoa, it's nice. What? Yeah, that's the closet back here. All of our stuff's back here. The bed was nice and big. Oh, my back just cracked. Oh yeah, Ooh. good or bad? Um, I think good. And the bathroom, though small, I'm standing in the shower to get this shot, felt pretty new and clean. My biggest gripe with the room at the link is that their furniture pieces are all built into the wall. Yeah, the desk is pretty minimal. Which isn't inherently a problem, but with both the bed and the long desk, there is the tiniest crack between the furniture piece and the wall. And at the end of this day, when I took my wedding ring off to go to sleep, I lost it back here. And I think it's behind one of those things, and I don't think we're ever gonna see it again, but we're gonna try. And and after searching high and low on the morning of day three, I resigned myself to the fact that the ring was just lost at the link forever. If anyone wants to try their luck at room 3121 at the link, let me know. It might be there. But a few hours later, Paul, one of the link staff members, <gasps> that's it. Oh my God. You're amazing. Fished my ring out from behind here with his hook. Upset of all upsets. The ring has been found. <laughs> the engineer slash maintenance guy is my fing hero. So my ring was saved. On one hand, Link, I don't like your desk, but I do like your Paul. Okay, he's great. Now back to our tour of the Link on day two. How are you doing? I'm pretty tired. All right, we cannot fall asleep. No. Because we have three more things to do. I briefly mentioned the Link Promenade earlier, but it is really built out and fun. It's kind of like if City Walk in downtown Disney had a drunken baby. It's an open air pedestrian only street with lots of restaurants, bars, and stores. I also see a fountain and another ice bar down there. And a few marquee attractions. They have the Museum of Selfies, which is an Instagram museum, which was kind of cute, but I'm not really sure it's worth going to as we walked through it in about 20 minutes. Like the prophecy foretold, Guy Fieri will alight from heaven above with his frosted bulbs. <laughs> Uh, let's, 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 Are you done? I'm glad you chugged that coffee. And then they also have a zip line and a huge Ferris wheel called the High Roller. Clocking in at 550 feet tall, the High Roller is the largest observation wheel in North America, and it sends you around its circumference in a large clear pod with a bunch of other people. I'm trying to showcase how Hera's uh, theme is purple. <laughs> I generally liked it, as it was cool to get a high vantage point on the strip from right in the middle of it, but it takes a while to get up there. It takes 30 minutes to get all the way around, and it's been seven and a half minutes. Wow. 
It feels like hours. <laughs> and then you're only at the top for a short while. I know that's how Ferris wheels work, but that's just how I felt. Maybe I was just anxious to get to our final stop of the day, the one we've all been waiting for, and the one Tyler and I were dressed for, Guy Fieri's restaurant inside of The Link. I will say it smacks of hickory barbecue out front here. Oh, yeah. It really, it smells good. Now to Tyler and I, who are decently well-versed Food Network fans, Guy Fieri is king, he's a style icon and flavor icon, and he liked the cake we decorated for him during Matt Pat's charity livestream a couple years back, so we love him. And let me tell you, the vibes inside his restaurant are Immaculate. Thank you. And the menu is chock full of lots of very flavorful dishes, like the trash can nachos. Ah! Amazing. Wow, a pile. Truly a pile of nachos. Tyler's beef dip sandwich. Amazing. My turkey burger. I don't know how to approach this. The most intimidating piece of food I've ever attempted to eat. It's like the sword in the stone. <laughs> That's Excalibur. We are gonna go in a bit more depth on his restaurant in our Celebrity Chef video, but my only real criticism, I just wish the restaurant was called Flavor Town. It's Guy Fieri's Vegas. That's an awful name. I just feel like it's right there. How about Flavor Sin City? No, ready, no, it's Flavor Town, Poland, Sin City. Choose flavor to city. And with all that distance traveled, we started off at the Encore. Yeah. All those rooms seen and all that food eaten. Three celebrity chef restaurants, the Link Promenade, the Museum of Selfies, the fucking Ferris wheel. We finally called it a night. Hey, we went to the ice party too. But if we stay frosty. I forgot about the ice party. We're gonna pull this off. Truly, truly a marathon day on the strip. Now, day three on this side of the strip was a pretty packed day, though not quite as bad as the day before, and we had three hotels on the docket, which didn't have a ton in common, so it took me a while to figure out what to call this day, but I finally landed on something old but renovated, the Flamingo, something new but weird, the Cromwell, and something random and kinda blue, Bally's. And kinda fitting to the marriage theme, the Flamingo. We started this day off at the Flamingo. Should we go see the Flamingos? In their wedding chapel. And also kind of fitting, this was the entire day I thought I had lost my wedding ring at the Link Forever. Now, the Flamingo is actually the oldest still operating casino on the entire strip, as it was opened by mobster Bugsy Siegel in 1946. Flamingo merch, anyone? And if you couldn't guess, it is Flamingo themed. I think the vibe here is overall just when in doubt, be pink. Cause like the trash cans are just pink. Are they decorated? Not really, they're just pink. Now it definitely has been renovated since the 40s, but I would say it definitely still has a retro feel to it. I'm not gonna lie, some parts of the casino floor and general common areas look a bit dated or shabby, but some of the retro is just vibes. They also have mirrors everywhere. With the marquee lights, mirrored surfaces, and lots and lots of crystals. I will say though, the room. Oh! Come on in. Seems to have been renovated pretty recently. Kind of spacious, kind of mid-century, kind of pink. Smells good in here. Also flamingoed. The room isn't particularly tricked out, but it is nicely redone. I will sleep in this bed like a flamingo sleeps in its own feathers. Paying homage to both the pink motif of the entire hotel, as well as the vintage aspects. Yeah, nailed it. Wow, good. Oh, and more flamingos. I was literally gonna pitch for them to do a bunch of old school historical Vegas photos. Ta-da! And I found exactly what I was looking for on the bathroom door. It's like a pink vintage collage. Hey, I was filming that. Can you go to the bathroom? <laughs> Our room also had a nice view of the outdoor areas, the pool, wildlife, and oh yeah, the chapel. Let's rewind to the wedding chapel. Now, no, we did not renew our vows at the Flamingo. Instead, the chapel actually offers a service where you can buy a brick inscribed with the brief message of your choosing to be laid into the grounds of the Flamingo's gardens. We wrote, We came, we saw, we stayed, Sophia and Tyler, 2022. And it actually takes about six months to get paved in, so it should be ready right about now. If you guys come to the Flamingo, you have to look for our brick. There is now a physical legacy of this video on the Vegas Strip. There also might be Sav's wedding ring at the link. Besides brick buying, we also checked out their Flamingo habitat, which was cute. Look how like um, skinny they are when they're all drenched. They're like wet cats. And generally, their gardens are pretty expansive and nice. There are some huge koi fish in the little creek here, but the whole place does kind of have that bird smell. I know there are birds here. What's this guy doing? He looks mean. <laughs> 
He looks menacing. It's just not my favorite smell. I wasn't expecting pelicans, but now I'm disappointed. <laughs> now, after visiting the flamingos, we headed one hotel down to the Cromwell next door. Bloody Blaster's taking over every casino. I know I originally said the Cromwell was new and weird. It itself is new, but kind of like the Link, has gone through a few names and iterations over the years. From the Barbary Coast Hotel to Bill's Gamblin' Hall and Saloon, until it was remodeled as the Cromwell in 2014. It is supposed to be kind of French-themed, but to me, I get more of an after-hours, late-night jazz club kind of feel from the whole place. Kind of velveted, kind of plush, kind of chandelier, lounge vibes. And it's a relatively short building, so it has very few guest rooms compared to all of its neighbors. Though for a small hotel, it has a few pretty big draws, including their rooftop drays, nightclub, and beach club. And they also devote what seems like an entire wing of their hotel to Giada De Laurentiis' eponymous Italian restaurant. The restaurant is pretty large. It's huge. Yeah. Giada is another pretty well-known Food Network star, and so we stopped by her restaurant for our Celebrity Chef video. I also won't spoil our review of this one too much. It's kind like a flaccid artichoke lollipop. It is. <laughs> but we have been here before, and in general, we really like it. She really makes it rain with the pasta. Please ignore the other pile of pasta to Tyler's right-hand side. And weirdly, there is a subtle through line of things being oversized, like this huge wheel of cheese and this huge pepper grinder. That was the biggest pepper grinder shaker thing I've ever seen in my life. I think it's bigger than Gianna. Literally, <laughs> it literally is. And after stuffing ourselves with pasta. Okay, that much. <laughs> and thankfully, a nice cappuccino or two, we headed over to the Cromwell room. Interesting. There's corsets on either wall. I know. Which I gotta be honest, I didn't love. Ooh. Oh. Oh. Come on in. The whole room has a bit of a heavy-handed boudoir sexy vibe with somewhat scandalous artwork. Oh, well, that's a... Venetian sex party? A little bit. More like a rococo orgy. A small bathroom with a mirror inside of the shower. Which has got to be for sensual purposes. Or just um, self-admiration, I guess. And though there's nothing wrong with it per se... Oh, a very plush. Squishy. Yeah. Why do I look like Rasputin? It's not very welcoming. I gotta give them props for at least trying to stick to their theme. I said sensual and sexual, both. Erotic? Risque, uh, smoking lounge. Exactly. I don't know. Um, but the vibes are just a little off, to the point where it trying to be sexy makes it unsexy to me. Also, we had a view of the literal dumpster in the alleyway next door. View's pretty bad. Oh, an awful view. Which wasn't awesome. Ooh, actually, literally a trash view. A view of the trash. <laughs> now after a little late afternoon delight in our Cromwell room, just kidding. We headed across the street to Bally's. Bally's does have this open air plaza with shops and restaurants in front of it. Wall bangers. It's got Giordano's too. But by the time we got there, a lot of the things were closed and it was still pretty hot out. So we just booked it inside. Now I've always been curious about Bally's. It's very nondescript from the outside, but it's very large. So I always wondered what it was like. This ain't half bad. Kind of big too. And after being inside of it for a bit, I can't really tell you. It's huge, marble, shiny, and kind of blue. That's all I got. I think the theme is nothing. The, the theme is Bally's. The, the, <laughs> the name is Bally's, the company is Bally's, the casino is Bally's, the theme is Bally's. Now, the word on the street is that a lot of the rooms at Bally's have recently been redone. A come on Whoa. So it's maybe a good spot to stay to have a nicer room. Whoa, whoa, it's whoa, 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 what the hell? Whoa! Centrally located on the strip, that isn't that expensive. This is the standard room? Yeah. Must not be. I, I think it is. What the heck is going on in here? And after checking out our room, I can confirm. This place is huge. It's kind of incredibly random, but it's super nice. There are a lot of very large windows, which open up to a pretty good view. To the window, to the wall, that's also a window. And the rest of the room is very open concept. So the bedroom and the bathroom are pretty much one large open space. Upon closer inspection, some of the details weren't that nice. Oh. Oh, um, this bed is not as luxurious as it seemed when we first walked in. <laughs> but the bathroom is tricked out to all hell. Queen size bed, jacuzzi tub, a shower behind the tub. Oh, it's a big shower. Two doors. 
But honestly, whatever qualms we had with the room didn't matter too much to us, because after the second marathon day in a row, we were pretty ready to crash, which is why we almost skipped our activity at Bally's and just went to bed. All right, we gotta go to mini golf. Why did we sign up for this? There are a few other things to do at Bally's, but we had signed up for Twilight Zone Mini Golf, located in the basement, where there's also an arcade and some other games and a food court. There's a lot of people here. This whole downstairs area of Bally's is pretty popular. Now, I don't know the Twilight Zone all that well, and I don't love mini golf either. This Twilight Zone episode scared me so much as a kid. So I did not think I was gonna like this. God damn it. Not great. It's basically a huge, almost completely dark room with a black light slash glow in the dark mini golf course inside of it. Oh my God, look at my shoes. Look at your crazy teeth and your crazy shirt. Yeah, my Pocono's Bigfoot shirt came in handy today. And weirdly, I loved it. Beautiful. I believe. It's spooky, it's very air conditioned, and the soundtrack is great. I this isn't that scary. I thought it'd be scarier. I thought they'd have people to jump out at us. And as someone who really only does mini golfing if I really have to. Oh! I thought the course was pretty inventive. Oh, it's a birdie. Ooh. That was pretty good, right? There you go. So an A plus for Twilight Zone mini golf. <laughs> kind of worked. You made it. I found the rest of Bally's to be a bit random, but I would do this again. That was like one of my favorite activities we've done. That was great. I thought it was really cool. My favorite part of the day was when Paul found my wedding ring and also mini golf. Euphoric moment. Yeah, the mini golf was good though too. Yeah. <laughs> the next morning broke bright and early-ish on our second to last day on the Vegas Strip, which I'm calling our coast to coast day, or our west meets further west day, where we go from Paris to LA, AKA Planet Hollywood. I ate all of the Giada leftovers last night. It was... A choice. I slept brilliantly, but it was a choice. And Paris, which is up first, is one of our favorites and is actually connected to Bally's on the inside. So you can basically walk from one hotel to the other by just crossing this line here. Bally's, Paris, Bally's, Paris. The Paris is, as the name suggests, Parisian themed with an Arc de Triomphe, giant hot air balloon and Eiffel Tower on the outside of the building and various French themed areas inside. I like it. It feels, um, and inviting in here. Like the Napoleon Bar, this Moulin Rouge-esque theater, and the Hall of Mirrors slash Versailles-themed convention hall and lobby. Wow. The lesser known and yet more known side of Vegas. The endless conventions. And the Paris theming is very thorough and very well done. The only thing I can really criticize at all is that the legs of the Eiffel Tower pierce through the fake sky ceiling, but then completely disappear into nothing. That does break the illusion a little bit. Paris in general is kind of mid-priced. Oh, come on. Okay. Not that cheap, but also not supposed to be all that fancy. I think it's pretty nice in here. And I think the room pretty much reflects that. Uh, oh, first impression is bouncy. A little springy. Springy. Yeah. Springy. There's some kick to it. As the room was not the most updated feeling, but was overall fine. And there was a little bit of theming in here. You have a fleur-de-lis sort of on your fake balcony. Obviously you have this piece of artwork that says Paris. The media unit looks like something that would come to life and eat me, a la Beauty and the Beast. Which is always a win in my book. So that is hotel room number 30. Oh! Oh wow. Are you serious? Yeah. I was gonna think about it, but yes. Now, in terms of attractions, come on out. Notably, the Paris has a lot of different dining options. There used to be a really great dim sum place called Yong Kang Street that we would always come to. It was amazing. They got rid of it and replaced it with a Nobu. How dare they? I can't believe they've done this to us. But there are still many pastry shops, cafes, crepe places. That's beautiful. Wish I could have had some dim sum, but this is pretty good. And there are also a lot of celebrity chef restaurants at the Paris. While we were there, they were in the process of constructing a Martha Stewart restaurant, and there's also a Gordon Ramsay steak restaurant. Which has like a portal into the steak as the entrance. Are you entering the steak? Oh yeah. Or am I wrong? We specifically hit up Vanderpump à Paris. I know Lisa Vanderpump herself is technically not a celebrity chef, but she is a celebrity restaurateur, and once again, Tyler's celebrity crush. There's a menage à tomatoes. Vanderpump à Paris is very, I guess, maximalist would be the word, and it is more like a decked out cocktail parlor than a real restaurant, in my opinion. Whoa! Oh, that is smoky in the face. But we liked it here. Goodbye, Kyle. <laughs> We won't spoil our review too much. You get a menage in the mouth. But the stuffed baguette was tasty. 
We also did head up to the top of the Eiffel Tower to their observation deck, which I had never been to before. It's pretty up here. Yeah, it's really pretty. You're also really close to the fake sky though. Oh yeah. Even faker than usual. The Vegas Eiffel Tower is a half-size replica of the real one, coming in at about 541 feet tall. And it might not be as tall as the Strat or the High Roller, but I liked it up here. Fresh air up here. It right? is actually, yeah. yeah. It's toasty, I'm bacon, but like at the same time, it's kind of breezy. And we had a nice view of the hotels across the street we had started with all of 10 days ago. Dragon, dragon, dragon. That literally feels like a lifetime ago. There were a few scary moments where I felt like I was gonna lose a phone or camera. Don't drop that thing. Why would you say that right, <laughs> right now? It's in the cool. But we made it out of there unscathed. What do you think? We stay another week? <laughs> I mean, at this point, what's another week, right? <laughs> what's another 20 hotels? Throw in the best Western and the timeshares, I don't care. After that, we headed one hotel south to Planet Hollywood. Now, the Planet Hollywood is an interesting one. It reopened in 2007 after a reported billion dollar makeover, having previously spent almost 40 years as the Aladdin Hotel and Casino. And it is supposed to be Hollywood themed. And though there are a few things that point in that direction, like the classic Hollywood cafe, the place isn't bad, actually. The Zappos Theater, which has hosted a fair few celebrity residencies. Looks like Shania is shacking up over here nowadays. There is also a vague sinful slash sensual vibe with another hell-themed Gordon Ramsay restaurant. Let's get real, the dude loves hell. Uh, what's your brand? I think Satan. <laughs> burlesque dancers who dance on top of the poker tables and the centrally located love bar. Evidence, my hypothesis. There is also a large mall complex that adjoins Planet Hollywood called the Miracle Mile Shops. And this is a pretty good mall. Though interestingly, the mall starts off kind of gray and silver, modern and sleek, and then in the back turns into like a desert oasis city. I am not sure what's happening here. I wonder if this is supposed to be like a movie set or something. I think you're right that it's like a studio tour vibe. You know, it's like the Warner Brothers back lot. Or maybe it's left over from the Aladdin Casino because it does kind of look like Agrabah back here. A couple of notable things, there is a pretty good Korean barbecue place back here. And we also ended up hitting up the robot bar inside the mall. I love them. Why are they so cute and weird? They're like little Pixar lamps, but they're hammered. Which is what it sounds like. A little bit of ice, perfect. Cost $7. <laughs> you order custom drinks at a touch screen. I like that yours is a nice ombre. Yeah. And then two giant robot arms pour and mix your drink for you. The drinks were very expensive. 18 bucks for a drink that's mostly ice. It's pretty on par for Vegas. But the experience was kind of cool. I'm not gonna lie. This is yours, cranberry pineapple. This is mine, mostly ice. Cheers. Mine's good. Good. After that, we retired to our room at the Planet Hollywood. A small gripe, our room was weirdly behind a set of double doors for no reason, <laughs> which I just irrationally didn't like. Why is this weird little back thing? What's happening right now? I don't know. But the room itself, All right. come on in. I did generally like. Oh yeah. Oh, it's good. It was very clean, new feeling, and pretty spacious. Tyler, are you joining me for the bathroom vlog? No, he did. The bathroom was big and the bed was comfy. Ooh. Ooh. The mattress is above average. For sure. My only complaint was that the decorations were pretty sparse, with a strange emphasis on these mostly black and white portraits. Who is this guy? He is right outside the bathroom. He's kind of like a smoldering Abercrombie and Fitch model. So once again, the theming, confusing. But I was happy enough to crash here. No complaints here. I will take random lady with headphones. We were so close to the end of the strip, we could almost taste it. Striking distance, we're right there. So close, we can see the end of the strip. I'm surprised I even made it out of Paris. Yeah. So then we were on to day five and the final two hotels of this entire series and of this entire trip, the MGM Grand and the Tropicana. So we're calling this day the finish line. Let's go. Let's do it. Now, both of these hotels are a bit of a trek south of the Planet Hollywood, and the hike is not to be underestimated. It's pretty far. But at least there are some shops and restaurants that line Las Vegas Boulevard on the way down there, in case you need a break. Notably, there is a Taco Bell you can get married at. That was one of my rejected 2019 ideas. It's not that bad of an idea. 
idea. It's a good idea. I still want to do it. And a large Marshalls that is masquerading as a casino. Yeah, there's even an oxygen bar in the lobby of the Marshalls. Now, the MGM Grand is pretty grand. In fact, when it opened in 1993, it was the largest hotel in the world. Beyond being giant, it also has a lot of different attractions and amenities. What's the vibe in here? I have no is clue. Is it like movie theater? It is kind of like a movie theater, actually. And is, from what I can tell, kind of entertainment industry themed. I thought the vibes at the MGM Grand were overall pretty good. I actually think it's pretty fun here. It's just super crowded and huge and crazy. <laughs> <laughs> we did a fair amount of stuff while we were here, so let's start off with the one negative, the room. First off, the hallway was weird. We had to walk down like the longest hallway of my life, which changed carpeting halfway through, which made us feel like we were traveling through the looking glass to get to our room. It did look like a mirror from really far away. I think from this end, you can probably see it. And we were not the only people freaked out by this. I'm tripping up. I said, I can't look at the hallway. And the room itself was also kind of odd. Oh, come on. Oh, straight into the bathroom? Wow, really into the bathroom. The bathroom is small and dark and is just sort of jarringly in the wrong place. Like this is the view in from the hallway. And then when you walk around the sink and into the bedroom, it's also pretty cramped. Why does it feel like I'm on an airplane? Or a cruise ship. Yeah. There's barely a window to the outside, which makes it pretty dark. And the bed feels like a Murphy bed that just unfurled out of the wall. Second to last bed drop. Oh. It feels like a pull-out bed, too. It really, really does. It wow. It feels like a futon. This is a shit bed. Sorry. <laughs> it's the kind of room that if I got it on a train, I'd be impressed. But because it's in a grand hotel, I don't think it's very good. Goodbye, strange bathroom. Beyond the room, we had heard that the pool complex at the MGM Grand was one of the things to do there, so we headed over there next. This place is confusing. Oh yeah, it's a maze. We've walked around in a circle for sure. And though I did think they seemed a lot nicer than some of the other hotels we had stayed at, there were a lot of them. So we were able to find a semi-secluded one in the back that was kind of quiet and pretty relaxing. It's very uncrowded over here. Uncrowded and less DJ, which actually I appreciate. Tyler got us a virgin pina colada. You look happy. Which actually was kind of good. I see the appeal. Yeah. This is just pineapple syrup and ice. It's an amazing drink, yeah. After that, we headed over to the District, which is a wing of the hotel that has a food court. And there's a Johnny Rockets right there, my arch enemy. And then a bunch of celebrity chef or just run by celebrities restaurants in a row. For our upcoming video, we stopped by Iron Chef Morimoto's restaurant, which had some really good classic sushi, as well as some more fusion-y hot stone dishes. It smells so good. Good. And we also stopped by Emerald Lagasse's Fish House on a secret extra day. Shh. All right, Hi. Chowderhead. Chowderhead. Overall, the food was really good at both of these places, but in the last couple of days here, we did start feeling a little celebrity chef burnout. Okay, we just ordered a bunch of different stuff, and then Tyler goes, Feel free to keep the Diet Cokes coming. I don't know if they charge for the refills. Or maybe it was just general casino burnout. This is also like my eighth Diet Coke. They kept it coming. So full of fish, we headed back out into the night, just two cats on a hot cement sidewalk to walk over to our final hotel on the Strip. There it is, our last stop. Being buffeted by a hot wind. Now for us, this was a big moment. We'd been in Vegas for a couple of weeks. It was kind of hard to remember a time before Vegas. This is our final walk, Saf. For some reason I don't believe that's true. <laughs> and it was all coming to a close right here at the Tropicana. All right. Welcome to the final hotel. Now, I didn't know much about the Tropicana before this. It is kind of a vintage hotel, as it opened in 1957. Wow, look at this ceiling. The ceiling's pretty sick. Yeah. And stylistically, it's supposed to be South Beach, Miami, and Cuban-inspired. And I think that does kind of come through. Though it doesn't really feel like a casino mega resort, as the casino floor here is relatively small, it does kind of feel bright, Floridian, and tropical. Like, I don't feel like we're in Vegas right now. No, it feels a little bit like we're in the Fort Lauderdale airport. Now, I wouldn't say there is a ton to do here, though we did manage to find some stuff to keep us busy. Starting off with yet another celebrity chef restaurant, Robert Irvine's Public House. What about steak and dinner? Actually, I think in the video, it'll be third dinner. Robert Irvine is a buff British Food Network host. I want the Robert Irvine breakfast. 17 raw eggs. <laughs> 
squat two fifty twelve times. That's my breakfast, motherfucker. That's his breakfast. <laughs> and is pictured sort of menacingly holding up a knife and a pastrami sandwich all over the Tropicana. Credit where credit's due, though. His restaurant is relatively affordable compared to the other celebrity chef restaurants. And it was less money than I spent at Johnny Rockets. <laughs> so I am actually pro Robert Irvine right now. Now, to get to the rooms, you have to cross this big bridge. And I would say that the residential area is actually more themed than downstairs. Alrighty, you ready? Last room. And the room itself, oh, come on, was overall okay. Eh, eh. It's not bad. No, it's not bad. I have said many times that I would be more forgiving of flaws if the theming was cute. What's our deal? The airport. <laughs> <laughs> and that principle applies to the Tropicana room. Last one. <laughs> as there were a fair few flaws. Our last bed drop. The bed was okay. Uh, oh. Not bad at all. But there were only two pillows and they were kind of skinny and weird. The air was a little musty and the bathroom layout was also a little strange. But you know what? I'm a woman of my word. It was themed. So I am happy to stay here. I'm happy to stay here. Now, a bit of a fake out here. We did do a couple more things at the Tropicana the next morning. So I guess the morning of day six, i.e. our secret extra day. We hit up their pool, which to be honest, was very cold. It's cold. It's cold. But it did kind of have a cute layout and on other days has these swim up blackjack tables, which seem fun. All right, we're gonna hang out in the pool for a little bit and then we're gonna go to our spa appointment. Ooh. We also went to the Tropicana Glow Spa, which is not really a famous spa the same way like the wind spa is, but it was pretty nice. It was pretty empty the day that we went, so I was able to film back there a lot. I went to the steam room. Oh, you like it? The steam room changes colors in my side. And our facials were good, as Tyler's hair can attest to. The fact that your hair is still sticking straight up. <laughs> we did also go back to Robert Irvine's for breakfast, because as much as we like to poke fun, nice banger to the mouth. We did like it. And that was us staying at every casino mega resort on the Vegas Strip. Now, in terms of an outro here, we figured the best thing to do would be to list our top fives of our favorites for different categories. These are not ranked in any particular order. They're just sort of the best ones of each category, in our opinion. First up, for best overall experience, our favorite hotels were the Venetian slash Palazzo, Resorts World, even though it's confusing, Park MGM, a breath of fresh air, Caesars Palace, a classic, and the Cosmos Cosmopolitan for great variety, with honorable mentions going to New York, New York, and Paris for impeccable theming. Next up, we have our favorite activities slash attractions, starting with the ice bar in the canal shops, which almost froze our camera, Twilight Zone mini golf at Bally's, an unexpected gem, the Tournament of Kings at Excalibur, because dragon, the Adventure Dome at Circus Circus, notably the Canyon Blaster, and the Ski Lodge at the Cosmo, because who doesn't love s'mores? Then we have our top dining experiences, including but not limited to celebrity chef restaurants. We have the Street Eats at Resorts World, Italy at Park MGM, Gordon Ramsay's Hell's Kitchen at Caesars Palace, David Chang's Momofuku at the Cosmo, and then Lisa Vanderpump's Vanderpump à Paris and Menage à Tomate. And then finally, we have our best rooms in terms of creature comforts, not necessarily theming, which includes the Encore, because the wind had a sandwich, the Nobu Hotel inside of Caesars, even though they got rid of our dim sum restaurant, the Nomad inside of Park MGM, the Waldorf Astoria, which is just straight up fancy, and then the Cosmo, which is kind of sweeping these awards right now. Honorable mention to the Sahara for honestly being great bang for the buck. There's not much else left to say. It was a wild ride with a lot of emotional ups and downs, so thanks to everyone who helped along the way, and thanks to you guys for watching if you've made it this far. And I hope you enjoyed this two week long Vegas extravaganza. Surprisingly, I can't wait to go back. If you liked that video, make sure to shamash that like button. And if you wanna see more videos like this, make sure to shamash that subscribe button. The Celebrity Chef video will be coming out once I get some sleep. Here are our short form slash social media handles, and here's our merch website. And with that, yes, all of that, I will see you guys a next time.